Hello everybody, it's Murray here and welcome back to my channel M Stuart Paintings. On today's acrylic painting tutorial, we're going to paint this really easy tropical beach with a nice wave and a palm tree. So let's get into it. So a really nice and easy painting tutorial today, so you're not going to need many colours. They are titanium white, cad yellow, cerulean blue, cobalt blue, sap green, iris purple, burnt umber and ivory black. Now I've got a burnt sienna stained canvas that all I've done is use cobalt blue to create an outline. We're going to have one third of the top of the canvas as sky. We're going to have two thirds as the ocean and the beach. So we're going to have this nice big powerful wave. We're going to have a little wave as it gets a bit weaker as it comes towards shore. And then we're going to have all this nice sea foam as the water sort of comes onto the beach. And then we're going to have a little bit of sand at the bottom. And then what we can do is we can put a palm tree in later. So I'll teach you all how to do that. So the first thing is first we're going to start at the back and we're going to paint the sky. So I've got two premix blues here and I'm going to teach you how to make them really, really easily. So they're really nice and realistic. So the first blue is just cobalt blue and cerulean blue and lots of white. And the second darker blue is cerulean blue, cobalt blue, a little bit of purple and just less white. So look, if you mix cerulean blue and cobalt blue together, you get royal blue. And all you have to do is just add lots and lots and lots of white, really loads of white because the blue is quite powerful. So look, it's still a little bit too dark. So if I add more white and make it more creamy, there we go. We'll get this lighter shade of pastel blue and that's what i tend to use for the horizons in lots of my painting but if you want to make the darker shade all you do is you add the same two blues together so cerulean blue and cobalt blue and you add a tiny bit of purple just to make it a little bit cooler and you just add less white and you should get that darker shade so we've got the lighter shade and the darker shade all mixed so what we're going to do is we're going to use the lighter shade at the horizon so don't worry if you go over your line we'll neaten that all up and we'll straighten everything later but what we want to do we just want to block in the painting so all we're doing we're just using this nice light pastel blue because a little trick when you're painting landscapes, the horizon is always a shade lighter in the sky than the top half. It's a little trick. So all we're going to do, look, we're just going to add the darker blue. So that's got less white and a tiny bit of purple in it. And all we're going to do, look, we're just going to frame the corners. So you've got this lovely light color and then you've got a darker blue at the top. And that will just frame your composition. So just make your painting just nice. So what we're going to do, we're going to come down and we're going to leave a tiny gap and then we're going to switch to the lighter shade of blue. So if I just pick up my palette and we're going to use the same brush and all we're going to do, look, we're going to create X shapes and we're just going to blend the two tones into one another. So we want to leave the nice darkened corners, so we want that dark blue in the corners. And all we want to do is just merge the two blues together. And it should look like a sky that's fading off into the distance. So it's a really easy trick. You can use it on any landscape. Just always try to make your horizon a bit lighter than the corners. So now that it's dry, all I'm going to do, I'm just got, I've got all these horrible bits of burnt sienna shining through. So I'm just going to give it a second coat. And then we're going to paint some clouds on the top. So really, really quickly. Now it's dry. Look, look how much... Just from putting a second coat of paint on the um, canvas, you can get rid of all these horrible brush marks and you can just make your blending look prettier and it gets rid of any of the canvas shown through. You don't have to paint your canvas brown. I just do it because I find it easier so I can see where I've missed. And look, all we're going to do, just wipe a little bit of water. My, it's a very hot day here in London, so a lot of my palette is drying. So look, all I'm going to do, I'm just going to make the corners nice and dark. There we go. And then switch back to the lighter shade so we don't have such a jump. So just get plenty of the lighter shade on your brush and just create X shapes. So watch, just blend the two colours together. And just ease up as you move upwards. So just don't push down so hard onto the canvas and just let the paint sort of run up your brush and the bristles and you can easily blend look so easy easy peasy 
there we go. So we've got this nice blended sky. It looks nice and realistic. And we're going to add some clouds. So all I'm going to do, now we've got this nice blended sky, I'm going to get plenty of white. And while it's all still wet, I'm going to just imply some clouds. So I'm deliberately making the canvas still wet so I can just blend this white into the light blue. Because I want to push these clouds really far back um, until we put all the detail. I just want to make them nice and sort of marshmallow in off into the distance. So again, look, we're just using that white and it should sort of blur into the light blue. But all we're doing, we're just trying to create some fluffy marshmallowy clouds in the distance just on the horizon. So by doing this while the paint is wet, we can just blend it in. And then while it's drying, you can just come back with a little bit more white, not too much. And we can just make them a bit more stand out because if you add white to wet paint, it will just kind of blur and just create sort of a mush and you won't get much of um, a detail. So just by going over the top as it dries, just add a little bit more white. You know, see, just a little bit more white. You can just make them look a bit more prominent so they stick out more against the background. But we don't want them too bright yet just yet because we're going to put in our palm tree later which I'll teach you all how to do. So all we're doing, look, we're just trying to create sort of shapes of far away clouds. We can have some little ones breaking apart in the top corners. Just to add a little bit of detail. So it's really easy, take your time. Let's have a little one up here. Why not? So that looks really cool. That looks really nice and realistic. So now we're going to block in our ocean. So we're going to use dark colors because we're going to imply deep far away water. So we're going to use cobalt blue and sap green. And I think I'm going to add a tiny bit of purple just to suck a bit of the color out. So cobalt blue and sap green and a little bit of purple. And let's test it out on the canvas. That was cool. So the reason we're using a nice dark color is to imply that that ocean that is far off and really, really deep water. So if you think of really deep water, it's quite dark blue. So we want to use a darker blue just to imply that, that all far away is really, really deep water. And then as we come towards the beach, we're going to use lighter colors and blend it in with the sand color to create the illusion of shallow water and make it look like the wave is coming towards us. So we're going to use this nice dark color in the background just to push this ocean right back. So again, there we go, easy peasy, all blocked in. And then what we're going to do, we're going to cheat and we're going to use the um, color of the top of the painting that we've already mixed. So what we're going to do, we're going to use some of the cerulean blue and cobalt blue, purple and white. I'm just going to mix a little hint of the previous color that we just used for the ocean, which was cobalt blue, sap green, and a little bit of purple, just a tiny bit, but I really want to use the main color that we just used at the top of the painting, because I want to imply that it's more pastel, that it's more shallow water. So all we're doing, we're just jumping from a really darker shade to a lighter shade and I've just got a hint of the darker ocean color in it just to so it doesn't look so a dramatic jump and what we'll do we'll blend it all in a minute we just want to block it all in first now the great thing about using the cobalt blue outline is you can still see your waves so it's really handy it's a little cheat again that you can still see the underpainting shine through so we know exactly where our waves are. So just going to go around it. All nice and blocked in. Super easy. Excellent. So if you imagine the sand at the bottom is going to be all brown. So we've got this in between where we've got all this shallow water. So why don't we do the sand first and then we can use that color to gauge 
the mix for the shallow water. So we're going to mix some brown and plenty of white. So brown and plenty of white and a tiny bit of purple just to cool it down and make it look more earthy. And what we're going to do, we're just going to block in the bottom of our canvas. So just like we did with the dark blue in the top corners, we're using this nice or pastel dark brown to frame the painting in the bottom corners. So we're just creating a nice dark frame at the bottom of the painting. So just take your time, make sure that all the bottom of your canvas is nice and blocked in. So we have this nice dark sand here at the bottom. And then because we've got these jumps in colour, what we want to do is now we're getting more shallow as we come towards the beach. We're going to mix a colour between the blue and that brown and white. So I'm just going to make some more of it because my palette keeps drying because it's so hot today. So just going to make some brown, lots of white and a dab of purple to make that sort of bottom colour. And all we've got to do is combine the two colours. So I'm going to take some of the sky colour, which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, dot of purple and white, and I'm just going to mix the two together. So what we're doing, we're creating a bridge tone. We're creating a tone that's a little bit sand and a little bit water. So if you imagine if you were standing there, this would sort of be the water that's coming up to your ankles as it comes up to the beach. And what we're going to do, we're going to use this colour to trick the viewer's eyes and it will make it look like the water is getting more shallow. So we're just blocking this area. So again, just take your time, just make sure you cover up all the canvas. Try to get rid of all the burnt sienna underneath. And then just as it joins here, I'm just going to add a bit more brown than um, blue. So more sand, if you imagine, than water. So I'm just going to add a little bit more brown than blue. And I'm just going to make the edges a little bit browner. You can't really notice it too much. And also my brush, look, it's sort of breaking away blue paint. There must have been a big solid chunk of blue paint. But again, it's just a little trick. You're just having more of the sand colour then you are water, it just looks a little bit browner. It's just so the transitions look really nice and smooth. And then what we're going to do now, we're just going to blend it a tiny bit, just so you haven't got a big jump in the colour. So we're just going to take some of that nice sandy blue colour, and just here on the top, we're just going to blend that into the blue. So I'm just letting the paint run out, and I'm just smearing it, just like we did at the top of the paint with the sky. I'm just doing my X shapes and I'm just gradually sort of glazing it. Look, I'm just letting hardly any paint come off my brush and I'm just merging it just so the transitions look really, really smooth. And then once you've done that section, we can do the same with the deeper water. So we can get some of the sky colour. I'm just going to clean my brush just so I haven't got that previous colour on it. And I'm just going to take some of the deep water. Mine's dried, so I'm just going to make it again. So it was um, cobalt blue, sap green, and a little bit of purple. Now this is a thing that I wanted to leave in the video. Sometimes your palette does dry. And sometimes when you go to match the colour, you because it's a, a colour that you're mixing, you've obviously, you go to put it on and it doesn't quite match. So there I put too much sap green, so I'm just putting a little bit more cobalt blue in there. And you have to repaint it. Now that can happen, that's quite normal. So I'm just going to add a little bit of cerulean blue just to make it a little bit lighter. So let's have a look. We can test it out. There we go. So look, if you have that, that is quite normal. If your palette dries and you have to rework an area, this area was a bit scruffy, so I'm just going to make it a bit nicer. Um, you can always just paint over it. That's, that is the wonderful thing about acrylics. They dry so quick that if you have to re-block it in, that's not a bother. You want to work more on the transitions than you do the colours. So I'm just going to add a little bit of white and some blues to it. Just to make it a little bit cooler. 
And again, we're just trying to bridge the two colors. We're just trying to look, just come up here. I think this looks a lot nicer. Look, there we go. I think it was just too harsh. It looked too... Remember, acrylics dry always darker. So if we have it too harsh, it will just make it look a bit cartoony. So all I'm doing, look, I'm just using a little bit of white. And I'm just going to look, I'm just under this big wave. I'm going to just create a shadow. And again, just merge the two colors. So if I zoom in for you. You can see that it's really easy, just like we did with the sand and the sky. We're just giving a hint, letting the, the paint run off our brush and just merging it into that other color. And I think because it's a bit lighter in shade, now it's dry, look, it doesn't look as harsh. Still looks deep, but it doesn't look as harsh as when we had it so dark. So you've got this deep water, the medium water, and then we've got the shallow water. And what we're going to do, we're just going to neaten it up very quickly. I'm just going to use a bit of chalk and a tape measure. I've got a dry canvas. Please dry your canvas before putting the paint tape over the top. This painting tape, because otherwise you'll pull off all the paint in that you've just um, laid down. So what I'm going to do, I've just measured a straight horizon. I'm going to neaten everything up and just straighten up my water. So a really easy technique is to use painting tape. And then if you've got a nice measured straight horizon, you can just mix some of the um, horizon color. You come right down to the line of the tape. You can get perfectly straight horizon. And you can also, once that is dry, do the same with the water. So if your water, there's a little bit of gap. That's the great thing about using the burnt sienna. You can see quite clearly where there's a gap because you'll have a big orange canvas. And you can just do the exact same thing. Once you dry your sky, you can just go right up to the painting tape and look, just get rid of all that and create a lovely straight line and you will have a perfectly straight ocean horizon. So tape is really, really good. Um, you can buy it in any art shop, it costs about a pound or a dollar and it's a bit of a lifesaver. So get your painting tape and then you can easily create nice straight horizons you don't have to do it by eye, and then if it's wonky, it kind of makes your painting look a bit weird. So look, we're just going to go right up to the top corner, right up to the edge of that paint, block it all in. And then when we remove our tape, we should have a lovely straight horizon. So now we're going to um, swap over to a flat brush. And what we're going to do, we're just going to create some um, divots, some um, caps of waves, just to create a... Um, a bit of realism um, so what we're going to do we're going to take some of the horizon color and some of the top color we're just going to mix the two together so we're just going to basically make cerulean blue cerulean blue excuse me uh, cobalt blue and a little bit of white and all i'm going to do i'm going to use the edge of my flat brush and i'm just going to sort of scrape across the canvas sideways and i'm just going to create little divots little heads of waves just to add some texture so it looks like the movement of the water. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating little lines. I'm using the edge of that brush. And I'm just trying to create some wonky divots just to give it some texture. And then because that paint is quite harsh and that color is quite bright, I'm just going to do a little trick that I always do. I'm just taking a step back now just to have a little look and thinking that it's a little bit bright. I'm just going to use the back of my hand look, just to smear it and just make it look a lot less harsh and a lot nicer. And I'm just gonna use the same color. I'm just gonna put some divots here. So if you imagine the shimmer of the sky, if you imagine this is the color of the sky shining down into the ocean. So that's why we're using the same color, we're matching it. So all we're doing, look, we're just creating little divots. They're really subtle. Once they dry, look, you can barely notice them. If you look at the far ones in the distance now, you can barely notice them. But it's just all this little added detail that creates the realism. So it's all really easy, look. And then all I'm gonna do is as it dries, look, I'm just gonna use the back of my hand, really soft, just so they're not as harsh. Okay, so we've got this nice bit of texture and we've got this nice clouds in the distance. 
and we're going to take the same color so that lovely horizon color and what we're going to do we're going to come down where the sand meets the ocean and we're just going to create a really nice big fluffy edge so we're going to create the lovely sort of carpet look of, of a wave so when that water comes up to the beach it creates that lovely sort of sea foam and you get this sort of fluffy edge so all I'm doing, I'm just using that horizon color just to block in that edge. And then all I'm going to do, I've just swapped to a, um, a fine liner brush. I'm just going to create splats and zigzags, some joining up in the exact same color to create sort of the bubbles and the sea foam. So all I like to do, I come out at sort of an angle, so I'm a little bit diagonal. And I just try to have some joined up and some not joined up and I just create little bubbles and splats so again like the clouds try to make them all different shapes and sizes so look we could have a big long one and then we could have a break we could have a big fat bit at the bottom I'm trying to make them all look random and different so you don't want them all looking the same so all I'm doing look, I'm just creating different shapes I've got some joined up to the, that nice fluffy edge and some not. And again, it's just to create the realism by just using all different random shapes. So we've done one side, we're just going to have a look here and then we'll do the other side. So I always tend to jump back from my painting and have a look. So I always take a little step back and just make sure everything's tickety boo as we say in the UK it's all okay and then I'm just going to do the other side so I'm just going to have some splats and blobs so it's all that lovely sea foam and what's great because we mix that colour for the sky we've got it handy so we can use this and it all matches so that's looking cool so now we're going to get the um, the darker blue which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue a little bit of purple to make it darker and less white so we're going to use the same color that we used at the very top of our canvas for the sky so cerulean blue cobalt blue purple and a less white and then we're just going to block in the froth of our waves so all I'm going to do I'm just going to use that dark blue just to block in all the sort of smashing spray of this wave so this could be a big powerful wave it's going to be kind of a cloudy, dull day. That's why we're using a bit darker colours. This could be a rainy day in the Caribbean or something. So what we're doing, we're just trying to create a nice shadowy colour. And then we'll put all the highlights on top. So the great thing about acrylics, if you put the darks on first, and then you can put the highlights on, you've got a nice uh, sort of contrast from darks and lights that the lights show up. So if we can use this dark blue first... We can put nice highlights and spray over the top. So we're just going to block it in. And again, look, we've got all different sort of bobbles. I've got some parts of the wave quite high, some of it um, quite short, just so it doesn't all look the same and square. I want it nice and bobbly. And then while we've got that color, look, we can go around the edge of our sea foam and kind of create a shadow. So this kind of, again, makes it look more 3D. So if I zoom in so you can see a bit, bit better, we can kind of make a nice shadow using that darker blue. And it just looks like the edge that's sort of far away from the light that's creating a nice shadow effect. So all we're gonna do, we're just gonna use a fine liner and we're just gonna outline our nice foamy edge there we go so we just outlined it really easy and then we're just going to take some of that blue and we're just going to block in this little bit so again we're going to make it nice and fluffy and bobbly and this is kind of like where there's a little wave coming into the shore so it's not as ferocious as the one in the background with all that power of the ocean it's kind of running out of steam and it's just sort of a little one as it comes into the, the beach. But we're still going to use the exact same colours so everything matches. 
And the great thing about these tutorials, this is what I'm trying to teach you at home, you can use these colours all the time. So once you know how to make them, please use them for things like your skies and your, your oceans and things like that. So we're just going to make a lighter shade of green and cerulean blue and a little bit cobalt blue, just a little bit. And we're just going to make a lighter greener shade. We're going to put some white into it to make it lighter. And we're just going to have a little bit of a shallow part of the wave where the light is shining through. So sap green, cerulean blue, a little bit of cobalt blue and some white. And just here as the sort of wave rises up, you get almost like you can see through it before it crashes down. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to colour in this bit in a lighter colour. And then what we'll do is we'll get a darker colour and we'll outline our wave and make it look all powerful. So everything's kind of blocked in. So what we're going to do now, we're going to get some brown and some black and some cobalt blue and make a really dark shadow colour. So brown, black, cobalt blue. We're going to add a little bit of sap green, just a little bit. We're going to create this really dark shadow colour now. But plenty of cobalt blue. I still want it nice and blue. We don't want to have it black yet. We want it really, really dark, but more blue than anything. And what we're going to do, we're going to outline and create the shape of our wave. So you can kind of see the cobalt blue that outline we had before. So what we want to do is shade it back in. And I want to create sort of a line that is not too straight but going across the canvas behind all this sea foam and underneath. So underneath you're going to have hardly any sunlight so we're just outlining it and again we're trying to make it all bobbly so it looks like it's smashing into the ocean. There we go. So we've got this nice outline now. And then just above it, we're just going to try to create it look like the wave is sort of cascading down. So we're just going around that sort of sea foam. Just so it's got a nice big shadow to give it a 3D approach. So we're just going around the sea foam. So we just want to create a really nice dark outline and we want it quite flat. Don't worry, waves aren't perfectly flat because they're round. But we want it quite flat just so it looks like it's bellowing up. So I'm just going around this sea foam here. Create this nice dark edge just so there's a bit of difference between the wave and the foam. And then just over here, I'm just going to go around this lighter area. Just have a little bit of the lighter shade shining through, just a tad. And again, I just want to make it a little bit more flatter. It sort of dips here, so I'm just going to make it a little bit flatter and straighter. And I'm just going to outline it underneath. Sort of blend it in. It's got a little bit of light shining through it. There we go. And then I'm just going to come out from it a little bit diagonally. So I'm just coming out a little bit diagonally just to add a little bit of texture to it. There we go. Just make it a little bit flatter. As they don't worry if you're not perfectly straight. Waves are never perfectly straight. And then we're just going to go back to our flat brush because it's easier to get flat lines. And we're just going to get that dark colour. And all we're going to do, we're just going to create some divots again with a shadow colour now in the far background. So these could be some, as they, these waves are really powerful as they come into the ocean. We can have just sort of harsher divots in the, in the water. So I'm just using that colour just to imply some texture. There we go. 
for some reason it's drying it really really flat it's not very dark so I might go over that later but here in the foreground it looks a little bit darker so again look I'm just using the edge of this flat brush to create little divots and shapes and I'm going to come out diagonally from underneath the wave just so it looks like it's rising up so you see that I'm leaving plenty of gaps in the underpainting so I'm just creating these little diagonal shapes and then as it gets more flat as it comes towards the beach I'm just going to go going across the canvas look I'm just going flat so under the wave I'm just going a little bit more diagonally look just a little bit more diagonally just to create the illusion that it's kind of rising up so let's see it's more diagonal and then as it comes towards the beach I'm just making that brush go a bit flatter so it looks like look, a bit more flat across the canvas and then what I'm going to do I'm just going to create a nice dark edge so just like we did with the bottom of the sea foam I'm just going to create an outline just so it looks like the water is going to curl around and crash into the beach so I'm just shading all this area so I'm just covering up some of that cobalt blue just giving it a nice outline I'm just letting the paint just run off my brush I'm just gently blending it in So there we go. This bit, a bit of cobalt blue is shining in a bit too much. And then while we've got that colour, I'm just going to outline underneath it again, just to give it a bit of realism and create a bit of shadow. So this is the shadow underneath this little wave. So same principle. If you just think we're using darker colors just to imply shadows and we're using the lighter colors and the highlights to imply sunlight so we're just using this darker color just to create the more 3d effect and while we've got it look we're just going to do the same on this area so we're just going to use the edge of the brush or you can use a fine liner if that makes you easier for you and we're just going to outline really thinly so really really sharp just using this really sharp edge of this flat brush just to create a nice outline just to give it a 3d effect there we go now we're going to go back to the horizon color so that was cerulean blue cobalt blue and plenty of white and all we're going to do is start adding some highlights so now we've got it all blocked in all I'm going to do is start adding some churn. So I'm just going to add some sort of sea spray and foam. I'm leaving little gaps. So if I zoom in for you, I'm just leaving little gaps between the light blue and the dark blue, just so plenty of that dark blue shines through. And I'm, all I'm doing is just creating little splats and blobs. Again, just to give it a bit of texture. Super easy. So just leave little bits of the dark blue in between your splats and it will look like texture. So there we go. So easy. And again, if you use a tiny brush, like a thin brush, it's so much easier to just put in the fine detail on. So there we go. Just going to add a little bit of texture just to that little wave. Can have some of it splatting up so I'm just pushing my brush against the canvas just to create little splats coming up just again so it's not so flat so we've got that one all texturized so we're just gonna get a bit of white and now that it's drying I'm just gonna add some little bubbles and little highlights just here in the middle so I'm just using pure white and I'm just going over some of these bits of sea foam on that pastel blue just to give it a little bit of highlight. Now the reason I'm doing that in the middle is because our wave in the far background, the big wave, is in the middle. I want the viewer's eyes to kind of focus on that. 
So by putting a little bit of a highlight in the middle and by having our little darkened corners and when we put on our palm tree in later, I want the viewer to sort of look like he's looking out into sea and he focuses towards the middle of the painting. So by just having a little bit of a highlight in the middle and having something like a wave or something in the background, it just draws your viewer's eyes in to the painting. So it's almost like they're standing on this beach looking out. So I'm not going to use this white all over the place. I'm just going to use it kind of in the middle. I'm just going to gently blur it. I'm still going to leave that nice dark blue outline just to create the 3D effect. So there we go. I'm just going to let it fade out. We'll do some on either side of it just so it's not so much in the middle. But you see now, if you look at the dark blue wave in the background, what a difference between using white and using this pastel blue. So white, just like black, is really overpowering. So you don't want to use too much of it. We just want to add certain areas, a little bit of sunlight. And by using it in the middle and having blue, cool blues either side, again, it just draws your eyes in. So what I'm doing, I'm just using a fine liner. I'm just creating little splats to integrate sort of water bubbles. So look, I'm just using, still doing the zigzag technique. So let's just let it fade out. I want to keep it nice and blue either side. And just because we've done it on the left, I'm just going to do a little bit more on the right. Actually, I might do it a bit more on the right. I might make it a little bit brighter. Because we're going to have the tree here, aren't we? So why not? So there we go. Just put some blobs and splats. And then we're just going to put a little bit of highlights here in the middle. So again, all I'm trying to do is create that sort of cascade of the wave. So I'm just creating sort of hook shapes. So I'm sort of creating a little hook. And again, I'm just leaving gaps in between so that some of that darker blue shines through. But I just want that white mainly in the middle. So just take your time. Use a small brush if you've got one. So again, just take your time. Just trying to create some of that foam. And then it's going to let it fade out. Let the paint run out. There we go. So we've done the bottom and we've done the middle. So now we're going to do the far back wave. And we're going to add a little bit of highlights to that. So we're just going to get some of the horizon color again. So it's cerulean blue, cobalt blue, and lots of white. And we're just going to get a fine liner. And I'm just going to create little splats and divots. And again, same technique. I'm leaving gaps so that darker blue can sh um, shine through. And again, to create the texture. So I'm using the darker blue to create all the sort of shadow in the foam. And I'm using the highlights to create all the sort of wash that's getting a bit of sunlight. And then what I tend to do is I sort of scrape the brush against the canvas and it creates, I just scrape it back and forth and it creates a sort of splat effect where you get bits of, so look, watch, just scrape it back and forth and just put little dots to create sort of the spray look. So I'm just letting the brush just scrape against the canvas just so it looks like all bits of wash and spray. And then we'll do the other side. Let's 
Really easy technique. You can have little bits of dots, little dots coming out. The water sprays up. And then here, if I zoom in for you, I'm just going to create a little crest just where the wave is crashing down. You sort of get that sort of foamy edge. And look, I'm just letting my brush, watch, I'm letting my brush just scrape against the canvas. Look, almost like an outline. Look, it's just scraping the paint's coming off. And then while we've got this light pastel colour, I'm just going to put some little joining bits of foam and some bubbles over the top. So can you see now, now we're about, I would say over halfway in, can you see now all the bits of the painting, it's like a foundation to a house. We just do it step by step, stage by stage. And it's not that overwhelming, it's, it's quite easy if you just follow along. But it's the underpainting underneath that now we're putting the highlights and the shadows over the top that create the realism. So all the blending bits, the hardest bit, now that we're adding all these bits over the top, it's just nice and easy. So all I'm doing, I'm just using a fine liner and I'm just creating some little highlights, some little sharp bubbles over the top. And some of those zigzags just to look a bit like foam. So look, you can just create sharp ones, you can do little diagonals, just so it looks like a bit of shimmer in the water. It's totally up to you, it's your painting. And now I'm going to take some of the shadow colour that we mixed up earlier, and I'm just going to create some divots again. So it's just going back and forth from your highlights and your shadows. So I'm just creating some of those diagonal lines again. Sometimes, as I say, your paints, they can dry a bit flat. So if you really want to make your outline sharper and darker, you can go over them just once or twice. And the same with highlights. If you want to make your highlights look brighter, and more vibrant, you can just go over them twice. It's because a lot of time with acrylics, it because they're water based they pick up the color underneath so if you're putting um, dark colors on it's still got a bit of hint of the color underneath so sometimes you just got to put it on twice and the exact same thing with whites if you're putting white on top of blue it's going to be a whitey blue so if you want it really white just give it a second coat so i'm just mixing some of that shadow color which was um, cobalt blue um, brown tiny bit of green and a bit of black just to make some of that really dark shadow color that we're using for the wave and I'm just gonna make this area look a bit darker just as I say just going over it twice so it's just having patience so I'm just creating these divots just to give it a bit more texture, look more like waves. So this one, look, just going over the same same outline, just making it darker. The same over here, just making this a bit harsher. And just on this little wave, I'm just going to make the outline a little bit darker. We'll see how it dries. As I say, like a lot of painting is trial and error, so sometimes you just have to come back and rework areas. So we'll see. Sometimes it looks really dark and it dries a bit flat. So we'll see later. So I'm just coming out, look diagonally. Just making these a bit more harsh. And then while I've got that colour, I'm just going to create some little dots in the sand. So I'm just going to create some little um, sort of debris and sort of uh, texture in my sand by just putting some little dots. Again with the fine liner, I'm just letting the paint run out. Look, I'm just creating little dots and squiggles just to give it a little bit more texture. 
So again, nothing really serious. It's just trying to just add little fine details to your work, just to give it that realism. And again, look, we're just going to use that harsh color just to outline this area in the hair. So as I keep saying, if you have the right brushes, it makes your life so much easier. They don't have to be expensive. You just want things like fine liners and blender brushes. And then we're just going to create a really nice sharp edge here, just to make it a bit more 3D. So just take your time, try to have a steady hand. There we go, nice sharp edge. And then as you can see, look, my white highlights, or my pastel blue highlights, are looking a bit flat. So I'm just using a bit of white, just like we did in the sea froth. I'm just using some bright white just to put some highlights here on this far wave. And again, we'll see how it dries and see if they're noticeable. And if not, we can give them a second coat. But we're just using white just to create some of that sort of bubbles and spray. You can do little pinprick dots that just create spray. And again, you just want it all different heights, just so it looks like it's all churning together. So again, if you use a really sharp brush, you can do little really fine dots on the edges. Really easy. Just some here on this side. Oh, I want to go on holiday. <laughs> I'm looking at the ocean. There's no nice ocean in London. We have the Brown Thames, <laughs> which was packed for the Jubilee weekend. And I'm looking at this lovely beach and I'm thinking, I want to go to a beach somewhere nice and hot and tropical. There we go. And some little dots and highlights. Take your time. Don't think you have to keep up with the painting on here on the tutorial. If you find it hard to keep up, just always pause it. Just take your time. Don't rush. So look, my palette keeps drying, so I'm just going to get some of the, the dark blue, which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue, purple, and white. And I'm just going to rub a little bit of the, um, the paint away. And I'm just sort of glazing over the top. I'm just making it a little bit more bluer. I think there's a big jump between the ocean and the shallow water. So I'm just trying to figure out how to sort of blend the two together. And by making it a little bit lighter, I think we can do that. But as I say, sometimes you have to take a step back from your painting and just see what works and what doesn't. But I think because the acrylics have dried a bit darker, there's a bit of a jump. So I'm going to get some of that brown and white. So plenty of white in your brown. Let's make a nice sort of creamy brown. A tiny bit of that blue. Oh god, all my paint's dry in here. So a tiny bit of the blue just to merge the two colours. But more brown and white than anything. There we go. So it's more brown and white. And I think what I'm going to do is just... If that's the sort of colour here on this bottom bit, let's just test it out. I'm just going to come up a little bit into this wave and sort of do the comb trick. So I'm just sort of creating little curls. But really what I want to do is just add a little bit of that brown and white just so it merges the deeper water. So if I zoom in for you, look, I'm just trying to curve it round. I'm just adding a little bit of brown and white just so again the jump from the deep water to the more shallow water doesn't look as obvious so just by using a sort of color in between you can sort of bridge these things t together and as i say you can use this technique for anything so if you have like a sunset or you want to go from shallow water to deep water and something if you just mix sort of an in-between color you can just sort of m merge from hots to colds so in this case we're creating shallow 
shallow water from deep water. Just using this brown just to sort of merge into and bridge the gap. So I think, look, it's a lot more brighter. It's got plenty of white in it. Even though it's going to dry a bit darker, I think it just looks a bit nicer. So a lot of the reasons I leave all these bits in the tutorials is because I want to show you how realistic this is because I don't want you thinking at home if it's edited that you just do something first time. A lot of painting is you have to work on it, you have to you have to get a feel for it and sort of feel your way out, take your time and use that intuition to think if you like it, if you're happy with it or if you want to need to rework areas. There we go. So that looks a bit nicer. That sort of blends together. And then I'm just going to get some of that lighter pastel blue. And I'm just going to put some of the dots back in. Because now we've reworked the underpainting. So we've reworked the sort of blending of colour. I'm just going to put some little slight highlights back in. So that's what I was saying to you. If you change anything, you can just go back and put the highlights back over the top. So if you darken an area or lighten an area, you can always go back and put your little sea foam and your bubbles back in. That's no worry. And it's not all going to mush together like oil paint. The great thing with acrylics, you can just give them five, ten minutes to dry. Or you can be like me and be impatient and just use a hairdryer and just dry it instantly. And then look, just go over the top with that nice clean horizon colour. Just put some of your um, sea foam and zigzags back in. So I'm going to get some black and some blue, and I'm just going to make this a lot darker. I think it's still too flat. So all I've done is I've mixed some black and some cobalt blue to make a Prussian blue, so black and blue basically. And I'm just going to use my fine line, I'm just going to really make this a lot darker. I think I want to make it a bit harsher so it stands out more. I think where we've blocked it in, it's just a bit too flat. So all I'm going to do, I'm just going to shade over the top with some of this black and blue. I'm using more blue than I am black. I've only got a little bit of black in, but as I say, black's so overpowering. It, you don't need much to make it swallow all the other colour. So if I zoom in for you, I'm just creating this really dark Prussian blue and just doing the exact same technique. Look, I'm just blocking back in my wave. And I think now it's in a darker colour. Look at that, it stands out a lot more. So as I say, that's you just got to find out what works, what doesn't work. Don't be afraid to make mistakes. So I think now with that darker colour, it does stand out a lot more, doesn't it? So let's just do it over here. I think it just makes it more 3D. There we go, we just come down here, just make this edge really nice and sharp. So all you're doing, look, you're just going over the top of it, it's really easy. Look, and you can do the same here. We're going to make this edge really, really harsh. So it's just a nice Prussian blue. Just make it really sharp here. Create this nice dark shadow just to give it a bit of texture. And then if we've done it one side, we're just going to do it on the other side. I'm just going to come down from the top and using the, my fine line, I'm just going to make it look like this water's crashing down. Create a nice dark outline. So this sort of builds up as it comes towards the shore. So again, I think this darker colour is just making it come alive a bit more. So 
So just using a really fine liner, so you can just create really sharp lines, really dark shadows. So that looks awesome. And then why don't we have this a little bit darker, so we can bring this a bit forward. So if you if you think all dark colours bring things towards the viewer. So by using this darker colour, we're going to bring this wave a little bit closer to the viewer. So just again, using this dark colour to bring it a bit forward. There we go, just smear it a little bit. And let's put a bit more shadow here. Oh, I think that looks a lot better. And then just here in the middle, I'm just going to give it a nice sharp edge. Again, just so you have something to focus on. And then just blend it into the lighter shade here, the more blues. So I'm just letting the paint run out. So that looks a lot more 3D, that looks better. And as I say, look, if you have to go over your whites, you just have to go over your whites. Just by going over them to make them more vibrant. So just like we did just now with the darks, just by adding a little bit more black, we made it a lot darker. I'm just adding just pure white. Now this area is all dry. I'm just going over the top just to make these areas more vibrant. So when you're happy with your water, you could leave your painting there and you've got a nice seascape that you can be proud of. But I want to push the envelope a bit. I know this is a tutorial for beginners, but I want to just sort of get people out of their comfort zone. So what we're going to do, we're going to use chalk and the canvas is totally dry and we're going to paint a palm tree. So I'm going to teach you all how to paint a big tropical palm tree. Now I made my tree a bit too chunky, you don't have to make it as chunky as me, um, but we're going to block it in with dark colours, so we're going to mix black and brown, so black and brown, and we're just going to create a very dark um, brown here, and all we're going to do, we're going to block in a tree trunk, so black and brown, my brush I think had a little bit of um, the sky colour on it, so that's why it's gone a bit, bit, bit um, light in colour. But if you just block it in with black and brown. Now as I say, I made my um, trunk a bit too wide and I have to fix it a little bit later, which I've left in the video to show you, um, just in case you do make a mistake. But if you don't want it as thick as mine, don't worry. So I'm just going to mix some black and brown. Now it's a bit drier. So black, cobalt blue and brown. And I'm just going to make the top half a little bit darker. So that's the colour it should have been. <laughs> so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to shade it into that nicer colour. And I'm just going to leave the bottom where the light is coming a little bit shade lighter. So I want the top half a lot darker and the bottom end a little bit lighter. Just for the light. So there we go. So we've got this nice thick tree trunk. And if you dry your work with hair dry, you can just use a baby wipe and you can just get rid of the chalk that we use to create the outline. So chalk is brilliant for trying things out on a canvas. You can use it to put people in or put objects in like a tree or a bird or anything like that. So it's really, really good. So we're going to get some cad yellow and some of the purple. And we're just going to mix the two together. So more purple than yellow. And we're just going to create this sort of, um, I don't know how you describe it, it's sort of like a, a golden grey. And all we're going to do, we're going to outline that far edge. So we're just going to go right up to the edge of the tree and we're just going to create a nice um, golden grey outline. And then all we're going to do, we're going to create knocks on the tree to give it that sort of palm tree look. But first we're just going to gently blend it into that dark colour. So again, we're just sort of blending it and then we're just going to come down and just create little knocks and divots into our palm tree trunk. So all I'm doing, I'm just creating little lines coming away from that blended area. So there we go. I can have one in the middle, why not? These are sort of all the sort of texture on the, on the tree, on the bark. 
And then we're going to mix some of that light horizon color, which was cerulean blue, cobalt blue and white. We're going to add a tiny bit of brown to it. So cerulean blue, cobalt blue, lots and lots of white and a tiny bit of brown. And we're going to create sort of a silver color. And we're just going to do this exactly the same on the opposite side of the underside of our tree trunk. So we're going to outline the edge first. So we've got a nice sharp color for the edge. And then we're just going to gently blend it towards the middle. So we're just gently blending it. And then we're just going to put the knocks on. So we're just going to go create these big thick knocks. Let's sort of curl around the tree. See how that works? And then I'm just going to get a little bit more white. I'm just going to create a sharper outline. So just make it a little bit brighter with a tiny bit more white on this bottom edge. Just to make the outline look a bit more smoother. So there we go. And just going to get some yellow, just add it to our cool purpley mix and a bit of brown. And still some purple, but I'm just going to make it a little shade brighter. And just like we did the white on the underneath, I'm just going to make this a little bit brighter on the top. So just give it a little bit of a glow. There we go. And again, just going to create some little knocks coming down. Uh, so it's got a bit of a yellow tinge to it. And just going to get some white. And some of that horizon colour. A tiny bit of brown. Just to create that silver again, but much more white this time. So an even brighter version. And as I say, I'm just going to make the edges just a little bit brighter. And by going it over it a second time, look, it just makes it a lot sharper. So just like we did with the water, just like we did with the waves, if you want to make your highlights a little tad brighter, look like I'm doing, and we've got this really nice sharp outline now, just dry your work or let it air dry, and just mix a little bit brighter shade as a highlight, and you can just look, see that makes it glow almost. And by having the lighter shade on one side and the darker, cooler shade on the other side, we're making it look 3D. How easy is that? And if you're like me and you're a bit of a perfectionist, you can get some black and brown and you can paint in a bit more of your bark. So where mine's a bit scruffy, look, you can just make it a little bit more in the shade. If I make it a little bit darker, it kind of looks like it's a little bit more in the shade at the, on the top right. So there we go, look, same trick, look, if it dries a bit flat, you can just go over the top with a second coat of paint to make it look darker and more professional. So there we go, we just try and create some of this texture on our bark. Awesome. So we've got a 3D palm tree. Now we're going to mix some brown and some sap green. So brown and sap green, and a little bit of cobalt blue. And we're going to create a dark shadow color for our palm leaves. So this is, these are kind of the leaves. And we're going to use our flat um, head of the brush. And we're just going to come down diagonally. I'm just going to wipe a little bit of the paint away so I've got a nice sharp edge of my brush. And all we're going to do is create really sharp lines. Excuse my hand in the way. We're going to create really sharp lines coming diagonally down all different shapes and sizes to create the illusion of palm leaves of the of the leaves of the tree. I'm just going to get some black, add that to the mix, and a bit of blue to make an even darker colour. Still got a little bit of green in it, so if I zoom in for you. Excuse me hand. And again, we're just using a darker color just to create a shadow. So we've got the lighter green and the darker green contrasting. Same technique. Look, I'm just creating really sharp 
long lines using that really flat edge of that brush. And then now that's dry look, I'm just going over the top once more with that white um, cerulean blue and cobalt blue and a dot of brown just to make this edge look really look like it's sparkling in the sun. So look, you can use a fine liner if you find that easier. If you find drawing straight lines easier. What I would say is always dry your canvas because then if you make a mistake, you can just use a baby wipe and wipe away the leaves or the tree trunk and you've still got your lovely seascape underneath. So if you always dry your work before you attempt to put something new on, it's kind of like an insurance policy, so to speak, where if you do make a mistake, you can just sort of change it. Now, I think my tree is just a bit too fat. I think it's too wide. I think it's like me. <laughs> it needs to go on a bit of a diet. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to get some of the sky color. I'm just going to look, just take away a bit of it. Just make it a little bit thinner. So I'm just going to take away using some of the sky color, some of the tree. Again, if you have to dry it and then just paint over it again, sometimes that's the case. So look, if you have to put a second layer of paint on just because you've got a bit of that brown sticking out, just dry it with a hairdryer and just go over it. And now, now we've got our palm leaves in, I'm just going to use some bright white and I'm just going to make the clouds a little bit brighter. So what I'm doing, I'm taking a fine liner, going around the leaves and I'm just making the clouds a little bit brighter. Now we've got everything where I want it to be. So I'm just adding white over the top to our clouds. And again, look, if, if I've gone through the clouds, I can just smear it with my finger. And where we've corrected that sky and made my um, tree trunk a little bit lighter, I'm just putting some white clouds in that gap, just so it looks all nice and blended. And again, look, some finishing touches. I'm just using some of that Prussian blue that we used earlier which is black and blue, but more blue than black. And all I'm doing, look, I'm just curling it around, creating our hook shapes. Just creating some fine detail. Just noticing where I've missed little bits and I want to put it on. But I don't want to go too detailed. So I think she's finished, hooray! So you've learned how to do this far off, lovely marshmallow sky. We've got the dark ocean water. We've got our shallow water where you've learned how to mix it with the sand to create a mix that looks like it's getting more close to the beach. We've used dark Prussian blue to create a wave. And um, we've got the 3D sea foam. You've learned how to paint a palm tree and how to paint palm leaves with, with one side in the shade and one side in the sunlight and it's a, just a really nice easy acrylic painting tutorial of a tropical beach so thank you so much um, my name is Murray we have plenty of um, tutorials here on my channel so please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already and thank you so much for watching don't forget to tag me at mshootpaintings on Instagram with your versions of the tutorial see you soon guys happy painting take care bye